Hello guys, my name is Moses and welcome to another episode of Study RX. Okay, so primarily I will focus on how the class of aldosterone receptor antagonists, drugs like spironolactone and eplerinone, work in heart failure patients. But before I begin, I want to give a few key points to remember for patient education reasons that I believe will also help grasp the material throughout the video. First, patients on aldosterone receptor antagonist medications must avoid a high potassium diet. Examples of this can be bananas, nuts, and even salt substitutes. Second, avoid NSAIDs like over-the-counter ibuprofen. NSAID stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Third, is avoid the consumption of ACE inhibitors like lisinopro, angiotensin receptor blockers such as valsartan, and aldosterone receptor antagonists like spironolactone. And this is because they may have a serious reaction when taken together that we'll discuss shortly. Now on to the pharmacology. Spironolactone and eplerinone are two drugs from the class aldosterone receptor antagonist. There are three important mechanisms of actions that need to be recalled by the end of this video. The first important mechanism of action for aldosterone receptor antagonists on the human body is that it works in the kidneys. Medications like spironolactone work on the kidneys by blocking the mineral corticoid receptors that keep the sodium channels open, and those channels allow sodium reabsorption. It will also block the sodium and potassium ATPase channels that allow potassium excretion into the urine. Second important mechanism of action is working in the heart. Aldosterone antagonists inhibit cardiac extracellular matrix and collagen deposition. These inhibitions thereby reduces cardiac fibrosis, which is caused by the excess of extracellular matrix in the heart muscle. Cardiac fibrosis refers to unusual thickening of the heart valves. It also reduces ventricular remodeling. And ventricular remodeling refers to changes in the size, shape, structure, and function of the heart. This can happen as a result of exercise or after injury to the heart muscle. Third, aldosterone receptor antagonists work on the body systemically by helping with oxidative stress due to the release of aldosterone by the kidney. Spironolactone will also be beneficial when a patient is in a pro-inflammatory state such as atherosclerosis, which is when the arteries harden and narrow. Slowly over time, the arteries become blocked and puts blood flow at risk, possibly leading to stroke or death. Okay, so remember these three mechanisms of action for aldosterone receptor antagonists. One, they decrease sodium reabsorption and increase potassium levels. Two, they inhibit extracellular matrix and collagen deposition. And three, they have anti-inflammatory actions that help with atherosclerosis. One last additional mechanism of action to try and remember is the release of aldosterone will also excrete calcium and this lowers the bone mineral density, which can lead to fractures, especially in elderly patients. So aldosterone receptor antagonist medications like spironolactone will also have the effect of maintaining and storing calcium for keeping bone density and protection against fractures. All right, so for adverse reactions, Focus on recalling at least these two from the aldosterone receptor antagonists. For spironolactone, one is gynecomastia. And gynecomastia is when there is swelling of the breast tissue in boys or men due to a hormone imbalance. And this is because spironolactone will interact with androgen and progesterone receptors. Second is impotence, which is also known as erectile dysfunction. These adverse effects are less frequent with eplerinone due to low affinity to the receptors. A very important piece of aldosterone receptor antagonists is to reduce the risk of hyperkalemia. And hyperkalemia is when a patient has an elevated level of potassium in the blood and this can worsen blood flow in heart failure patients. Well, the ACC AHA recently recommended strategies to minimize the risk for hyperkalemia with aldosterone antagonists in heart failure patients. A few things to avoid while taking this medication we already mentioned earlier, like NSAIDs, the triple combination of taking an ACE inhibitor, an ARB, and an aldosterone receptor antagonist together, 
also a high potassium diet. Additional contributing factors towards the risk of hyperkalemia may be having an impaired renal filtration. And this is important because the kidneys help eliminate waste products from the blood in the form of urine. And diabetic patients are also a risk factor for hyperkalemia. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed the content and images, please like, subscribe, and share the video. If you have time, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear your feedback. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my wife, my family, and my friends for all of your support in my career. Love you guys. And lastly, I want to give credit to a few YouTube channels that highly motivated me to do videos like this, and I highly recommend to check them out. A few of these are Osmosis, Sire Clifford Illustration, Armando Hasutgan, and Paul Bowling. Thank you guys, until next time.